And now all right. of a sudden, he's looking like the worst tackle in the league um, and giving away 18 penalties in the season. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of No Butts About It. I am your host, Josh Butts, and here from his car in, I believe, Steubenville, Ohio, we have a man who has suffered more losses than any of the other hosts of the show, Stan the Jet Fan. And I wanted to bring Stan on today because I was in the Twitterverse or the Xverse, and I saw a lot of people talking about a former Jet, who I believe is now a free agent, uh, Makai Becton. A lot of people seem to want to bring him over to their team, including Bengals fans. So, uh, Stan, what... What is your like initial summary of Makai Becton? Well, out of college, he was super promising, right? He went over Tristan Wirfs. To go over Tristan Wirfs, you have to be a very good tackle. And he had all the physical gifts, but very early on in his career, he was hit with so many injuries, uh, injury after injury, that he just did not develop in the right way. And then this last year, you saw a player who had who gave the most sacks in the league um, and the, uh, at the tackle position who played with the same guy to his right the entire year. So you can't really say maybe it's a different team, anything like that. Like he played with Lakin Thomas in the entire year, and he had all those issues. And, and even worse than that, he began developing this really bad penalty habit. So he's gone from being a super promising tackle, a guy who at the beginning of this year, uh, in our video, we probably talked about how I thought he was one of the guys that I was expecting to really take a step forward this year, right? Yeah, so Makai Becton has been the left tackle for the New York Jets since 2020 when he was drafted, uh, first round, 11th overall pick. But he hasn't had a whole lot of playing time because in all of 21 and 2022, essentially, he was out due to two separate knee injuries, and then he had an ankle injury, I believe, this season as well. So he just, like you said, has been injury riddled. Does that is there something in his playing style you think is causing those injuries or what, what is causing him to constantly be injured? So early on, I put a lot of the blame on that due to his weight. You no, know, he was a very heavy tackle and that's an issue that tackles in the league tend to have, right? Weight really pushes down on your knees and it makes it a lot harder to move. Uh, so that's what I blame for the injuries early on. Um, and, and I think to this day, I could still say that's probably the big reason. The, his first offseason, though, after his rookie year, he did lose a lot of weight. He got a bit slimmer. And the year after, he lost even more. He got a little more slimmer and, and, and supposedly more mobile. But I think at this point, I think his injuries is really uh, – it's going to be very hard for him to come back from that and to develop into a player who could play despite having, you know, constant nagging leg and knee issues. Yeah, he is uh, – according to the Jets' website, he weighed in at 363 pounds – and he's six foot seven. So he's a big dude. Definitely a bulky guy who you want on your O line, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's only 25 years old, so he's relatively young still. Um, but he just hasn't been able to keep that health up. And I know a lot of Bengals fans were interested in him. I'm not necessarily saying I am, but a lot of the connections that people are making are the fact that in his rookie season, Frank Pollock, who is currently the Bengals' offensive line coach, was the Jets' O-line coach. And under uh, Frank Pollock, uh, McKee, McKee Becton was able to get some rookie awards. He got numerous awards. I'm not going to name all of them off here. But do you think there's any possibility? Do you think it's even a good thing that he is a Frank Pollock guy? And then do you think there's any chance that him coming to the Bengals, being able to be coached by his former O-line coach would help him in any way? Or do you just think the injuries are going to continue to derail him? That's a lot of questions. I mean, to well, start off, yeah. here's the thing. The offensive tackle position is arguably the hardest to get at this point in the NFL. And furthermore, it's also the hardest to gauge. You know, it's so hard to tell you know, which guys on any part of the O-line really are going to transfer well as they age, transfer well season to season. 
Roger Saffold is a guy who, you know, sat on the Jets practice squad for two weeks this year. Last year, he was a pro bowler, right? There's, there, there are big drop, drop-offs, drop big fall-offs in this sport, and especially in this position. So for the Bengals, if you could get a guy like Mekhi Becton on a cheap contract, which he's not going to be demanding a lot of money, I think it is worth the risk, right? You're probably not going to have to shell out a lot of alloc- like uh, guaranteed money. And then, for- and then even the money you do have to shell out, it's going to be so minimal. I-, I do think he's probably worth it because he is a tackle, right? It is so hard to get a tackle, especially at 25. If you can make him work just as an average tackle, that is a huge asset to your team. So do I think it's worth it? I think yes. Um, I think for any team that can get a tackle who at one point had promise and, had- and you know, still has – arguably some promise left uh i don't see why you wouldn't because it's, it's worth a try you know um now to say that for, for do i expect him to get back and become a good tackle in the league uh honestly i don't really think so um look through the nfl there's a lot of guys whose careers were taken completely off the tracks due to injuries and i think unfortunately mckay's gonna be one of those guys uh when, when all is said and done um for his career though um, i think he should get you know another chance I think the Bengals are a good spot for him. I mean, uh, Frank Pollock, do do I think he did a great job with the Jets? Not necessarily, but he wasn't as bad as Keith Carter. So at least there's there's something there, right? Uh, and, and with with the Bengals, you're also a team where you're making a Super Bowl run, arguably for the next four or five years, as long as you have Burrow, uh, as long as he can stay healthy. That's a team where you need to take a couple of risks to try to get that type of tackle. And if you can get a guy like Mekhi Becton on a cheap contract, and if you could actually develop him to that type of tackle, that is the type of asset that can change, you know, those next three or four years for you. Because tackles are demanding so much money now. To be able to save that money, maybe you can, you know, keep a guy like, you know, Tyler Boyd or T. Higgins around a little longer. Right. So... One of my main concerns, aside from the injuries as a Bengals fan, and the free agent market for tackles right now isn't fantastic, as you alluded to, but uh, Makai Becton, he had 985 snaps played on offense, 18 penalties, which was second in the NFL, and he had 12 sacks allowed. That was tied for first in the NFL. Bringing him into the AFC North, against guys like T.J. Watt, uh, presumably Jadavion Clowney if the Ravens re-sign him, possibly Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, depending where he ends up lining up. I'd assume he'd have to line up at right tackle, which we'll get that, to that in a minute. But do you think those penalties and stuff can be worked on? I watched some film on Makai Becton, and there was really only one game, and it was the game against the Eagles, where he really seemed like he was able to shuffle and keep those big name guys out of the way and keep his quarterback safe. You know, I, I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, as I alluded to earlier, I don't think it's going to work out. However, because of how valuable his position is and because of the sort of situation the Bengals are in where you are going to be a contender, I think it's worth the risk. Um, Cause again, again, the risk is so minimal. Chances are you sign him. And if it doesn't work out, you cut him before the season even starts, you know? Um, get him in the building, I think, at least, you know, see what is there, what's left, if he can develop. Um, and, and the fact that his best uh, game was against the Eagles, who have a pretty good pass rush, that's a, that's a decently hopeful thing, you know. You, you mm-hmm. can look at that, the fact that he was able to hold up against the, those Eagles, uh, you know, edges. That, to me, means something. But in regards to, like, will he develop into something, like develop into a, a top 15 tackle like I thought back in the day um I don't think that's really a big possibility uh I think at at best you might get a swing tackle you know first guy off the bench in case of an injury okay but I'm not too and sure yeah what I remember in the off season I can't remember if it was this last off season or the one before but he was going to get moved to right tackle. And then because of injury, he ended up staying at left tackle anyway with the Bengals, He would almost definitely be the right tackle. We have Orlando Brown jr. As the left tackle. Do you think he'd even be willing to come to a team and play right tackle? Well, he, he was willing to a certain extent on the jets, right? I mean, he, he, he was willing to switch and the Bengals are a contender. And I, I don't think there's any question in his mind that, 
he is not going to be the best tackle on the Bengals. I think for the Jets, arguably right now our best tackle is well, it's definitely AVT, but AVT is really a guard, right? He's just he's just playing tackle for now. So, you know, when you're looking at that situation, I think he will understand going onto the Bengals, a team that has Orlando Brown. He took a big pay cut to go there. Um I, I think I think he will be able to understand that. And I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Um and I th- it's, it's a little hard to know what these guys are thinking in the NFL. You know, their lives are sure. so different from ours. But to to imagine that he doesn't understand that this next year of his season might be his last if he doesn't play his cards right, I think that'd be a little silly. I think it, it's very obvious to me, at least, and obvious to everyone who's, like, talking about this, discussing this. Um, and I imagine it's pretty obvious to him and his agent that this might be his last season if he doesn't get a team that wants to take the risk on him and succeed there. So... I, I do think he will be willing to do whatever he can to stay on the team. Yeah, I think he, and I'm not, I don't think he'll even necessarily come to the Bengals, but I think he'll have to sign somewhere on a prove it deal. I don't think anyone's going to throw big money at him. Um, <laughs> unless teams get really desperate for a left tackle, which is a possibility, but this draft class is also very good as well, which we'll talk about later once we kind of get some of these holes plugged up but the Bengals realistically what I see more of them doing is going after Jermaine Illuminor who has shown interest in coming to play for the Bengals at right tackle he'd be another one of these bridge guys similar to Mackay Becton I don't know that his ceiling is necessarily as high but then we also draft an offensive tackle and Becton just seems like someone who you bring in to have him start, I would think. But maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, I know you said bring him into camp and then possibly cut him. But with where he was drafted and everything, I would think he'd expect to at least have a standard shot at the starting role. I mean, I I find it hard to believe that he would look at his position, look at what he did this season and think he deserves a starting uh, position anywhere in the league, I think that would be a, a pretty pretty like far stretch for him. Um, I, would not, I would not think that would be a big problem, especially at the tackle position. Because, I mean, w- when you're playing tackle in the league, I think you understand how important that position is. I mean, as the edge rushers become more and more of like a marquee position in the league, so does the guys who have to stop them. So, uh I, I don't imagine that'll be a problem. Um, and, and if I am the Bengals, I'm I'm basically going to give him sl- something slightly above or at a minimum contract. So I don't think there's any teams that are going to shell out that much. Uh, and if if he played, you know, be- better consistently, maybe the year before, maybe he could get a better contract. I don't think because of his injuries, any team in the league is going to give him the type of contract that would mean he's a starter. I think no matter where he goes, he's going to be competing for a spot. Okay. And I, I'm totally on board with you, by the way, because I saw these posts on Twitter on X and I was like, I don't know about that one. There's, there's a lot of people that are getting hyped by the name, I think. And I'm, I've watched him because the jets are a team we cover. And I was just like, let's, let's maybe look at one of these lesser known guys still. Let's not get caught up in the name. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we finish up here? I mean, for Bengals fans, I just wouldn't put too much hope and trust in Mackay Becton. But if you do get him, yeah, of course, you know, pray that he pray that it works out. Because if it does, guess what? You get another tackle at probably the second hardest position to get in the NFL at a position that in free agency doesn't really pop up that much, at least not the big names. Um, and if you do, guess what? He's as you said it earlier. He's twenty five. There's time to develop him. There's time to to make him a, a member of the Bengals organization. The last another 10 years, right? So uh, when I'm looking at Mekhi Becton from a Bengals sort of perspective, be hopeful, but don't expect too much. Cautious optimism is what it sounds like for Mekhi Becton entering free agency. Thank you so much, Stan the Jet fan. And if you enjoyed this short little clip, we're going to get back into doing full shows here in early March once the NFL season restarts. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. We're going to be doing some live shows too. So uh, that'll be fun doing some free agency and draft reactions, me and Chuss and Stan. 
So uh, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. And comment to let me know what you think about Makai Becton and if you want him on your team this upcoming season. Until next time, go do something nice for someone.